subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. It has been more than a year that schools have remained closed and children have been learning from home. When confronted with the question of reopening schools, there are several issues that crop up. One of them being, will school buses be safe for children? A study in the US published on July 20 has now shown that it may be possible to limit COVID transmission in buses running in full capacity even at times when community transmission in an area is very high. In this episode, I take you through how this study was conducted and what it teaches us about using public transport during an ongoing pandemic. I am Mohana Basu and this is Pure Science. What we know now is that COVID is much more likely to spread through aerosols than through touching surfaces. So reducing the possibility of inhaling the virus-laden moisture droplets is much more important than sanitizing surfaces. In March 2020, when enough was not understood about the coronavirus and how it spreads, it was thought that the viral spread was similar to influenza spread. So mathematical models at the time justified keeping schools closed. But now it has been more than a year since schools have remained closed. Not only does this have adverse effect on the children's education and mental health, in countries like India, the lack of access to technology and internet may actually mean that many students end up dropping out of schools. Reopening schools present a huge operational challenge. One of the many challenges is the availability of a safe transport system for students. Most schools have school buses for this purpose. While parents of some of the more privileged students may be able to send their children to school using private cars, that is not an option for many. Now, depending on the size of the school bus, there could be anywhere between 30 to 60 children on each bus on a regular school day. So far, there has been little data on how COVID spread can be prevented in public transport. At the very beginning of the pandemic in March 2020, public buses were identified as the source of COVID-19 spread in Wuhan, China, which is why public transportation became a health concern throughout the world. For example, in a study published in October last year from China, which I will link in the description below, scientists found that one COVID-infected person had ended up infecting 24 of the 68 individuals traveling in a bus with air recirculation. The passengers were not wearing masks and the bus riders seated far away from the infected person also got infected. More recent studies have indicated that opening windows and using existing fans in buses can reduce exhaled airborne particles by up to 84%, theoretically lowering the risk of COVID exposure. But the operative word here is theoretically. These studies were not done with actual passengers present. To safely reopen, schools need actual data because often our theoretical understanding may not play out in the real world the way we expect. This particular study, published in the Journal of School Health, documented what happened when an independent school in Virginia in the US reopened in September 2020 and students returned to school in buses. So according to the researchers, this school gave an option to its 1,190 students beginning August 31st in 2020 to opt for in-person instructions for classes 1 to 12. Of these, 1,154 students selected in-person instructions. 3% of the students chose to continue studying virtually. Classes were opened gradually over four weeks. There were 15 school buses, each with a driver. Of these, seven buses were operating at larger capacities, so they also had one aid each. In total, there were 462 students who consistently utilized transportation. There were no symptom checks or temperature checks prior to entering the bus. 
Hand sanitizers were also not used upon boarding, but was available throughout the school day and temperatures were checked as students entered the school building. But families were emailed a checklist every school night to make sure that the students self-reported any symptoms. Students, bus drivers and aides were also expected to remain masked at all times in the bus. The school also paid attention to the seating arrangement in the buses. Each bus contained 11 to 13 rows, approximately 2.5 feet apart, with 22 to 26 double seats per bus. 10 of the 15 bus routes were applying at full capacity, so that meant students were required to be seated in almost every seat. Although no more than two students were allowed per seat, there was an occasional exception made in case of siblings. In fact, the seating arrangements were also made in such a way that siblings from the same household would share seats wherever possible. The buses were required to provide a one-inch window opening in the two windows in the middle and two windows in the last row of the seats on the bus. But in the study, they could not really track if more windows were also left open. Now, students were assigned to the same seats each day. Bus routes each way ranged from 36 to 60 minutes in the morning, 44 to 74 minutes in the afternoon, and 42 to 62 minutes on evening routes at the completion of after-school activities. Along with this, from August 28, 2020, all the students and the staff at the school, including all present on bus transport, were tested initially every two weeks with a pooled saliva-based testing. If the saliva-based testing showed a positive result, it was followed up by a confirmatory PCR test. Contact tracing was also performed by the school nurses and staff immediately upon receiving a positive test using seating charts to trace exposures. Students and staff who were deemed close contacts on the bus were quarantined for 14 days and tested by the school prior to being allowed to return to the school. Between August 31st, 2020 to March 19, 2021, 79 students and 21 staff members were identified to be infected with COVID-19 in that school. Of these, 37 students had used the bus during their COVID-19 infectious period. All 52 students who were close contacts remained asymptomatic and tested negative for COVID-19. During the study period, two drivers and one aide tested positive for COVID-19. One driver tested positive over a holiday period and was not present on the bus while infected. So he was left out of the study. Another driver and one aide were on the same bus but had also been together at a setting outside of work. Contact tracers found that the aide was most likely infected with COVID-19 while outside of school and infected the other driver during a social gathering. No students exposed to the aide or the driver tested positive. The study also found no cases of transmissions during bus transport even at distances of 2.5 feet. The authors also pointed out that this study was conducted during the highest community incidence rate of COVID in US. Now, there are many useful insights to be drawn from this study. First, that the recommendation of greater than 6 feet distancing may not be practical for public transportation, including buses. In case schools were to reopen in India, many school systems will struggle with providing adequate transportation capacity while maintaining a six feet spacing between passengers. This study shows that six feet of distance may not be required to effectively limit transmission of COVID-19 on buses if other measures are followed. What may be more important than distancing is ventilating, something that many agencies are still not adequately stressing in their COVID mitigation guidances. While this particular study is relatively small sample size of 462 students over a 7th month period, there were no identified cases of spread among the passengers which suggests that universal masking and open ventilation alone may be sufficient to limit COVID-19 transmission for school buses. Another limitation of the study was that it did not record how long or where each positive case was present on the bus or if the person was symptomatic or asymptomatic when detected. While the study is encouraging because it shows that there are ways to ensure that using public transport can remain safe, 
we must also note that it may not always be possible in countries like india to carry out the kind of covid screening that happened in the context of this study another important point that the researchers make is that we need to create a culture that keeps children and staff from coming to school sick we often ignore fevers and cough and send children to school avoiding this also helped keep the transmission rate low also different mitigation strategies together kept the transmission of covid-19 on school buses low so stressing on just one aspect of prevention will not be enough this is a reiteration of what has been known as the swiss cheese model where each individual mitigation strategy is not a 100% guarantee of protection but layering these can ensure that all the loopholes are closed this is mohana basu special correspondent at the print if you like our videos do consider joining the print youtube membership to get access to special membership perks such as early access to our key reports as well as exclusive community content on the youtube channel you can do so through the link in the description box below